When it came to defending the nation, the citizens of Stillwater stood ready to answer the call. At the time of the attack on Fort Sumter in April 1861, the governor of Minnesota, Alexander Ramsey, happened to be in Washington, D.C. At once, Ramsey volunteered 1,000 Minnesotans, or one regiment, to defend the North, making Minnesota the first to answer Abraham Lincoln's call for volunteers. Of that first Minnesota regiment, Company B was from the Stillwater area, primarily men from the local militia known as the Stillwater Guards. Among them was Sam Bloomer, who became a local hero. He was wounded twice during the war. At the first battle of Bull Run, his head was grazed by a bullet. A year later, carrying the colors during the Battle of Antietam, Bloomer was shot in the leg. After laying on the battlefield for three nights, he was found and taken to a field hospital where surgeons removed his leg. Bloomer was discharged, then returned home to Stillwater, where he lived an active life in the community. After 1865, in a nation weary of war, the state militia fell by the wayside until the late 1870s when Minnesota towns responded to new legislation creating a National Guard. By 1883, when a new militia unit was organized in Stillwater, there were 14 companies in Minnesota. The armory in those early years was on Myrtle Street. It was more than just a place for military drills. As one of the city's largest halls, it played host to dances, concerts, political rallies, and especially sporting events. From the old armory, Stillwater soldiers marched off to the Spanish-American War. Then, in 1916, to protect the border with Mexico, where they served under General John Pershing. A year later, again under Black Jack Pershing, they shipped out to France as part of the American Expeditionary Force in World War I. After Stillwater men returned from Europe at the end of the war, the drive for a new armory took on extra urgency. By that time, Minnesota had created a board to determine which cities would win highly sought-after state funds for new construction. Stillwater was among the winning cities in 1921, and they promptly hired Oscar Lang, a well-known Minneapolis architect, to design the hall. Lang is best known for his churches and college buildings, like Bow Memorial Chapel at St. Olaf College. There was a spirited public debate about the location of the new armory. Some, including many downtown merchants, wanted it built on South Main Street, while others hoped the site would be in a new civic center that would include City Hall, the library, and the armory. This was based on a master plan for the downtown developed by noted landscape architects Morell and Nichols. The armory opened in January 1923, with speeches by Governor Jacob Prius and Colonel E.L. Butts, a Stillwater native who had gone off to West Point as a young man. After the ceremonies, the floors were swept and a dance was held in the new drill hall. The next day, a local newspaper declared the armory to be one of the finest in the state and reported that the hall had already been marked off to be Minnesota's largest basketball court. The armory remained in use by the National Guard through World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Iraq Wars, and Afghanistan. And the citizens of Stillwater continue to recognize and honor our military heroes. <laughs>